Anyway, um, I'm going to start with a cliche introduction to better explain mental models. I have two truths and one lie. I grew up in a 99% Caucasian country and made up the other 1% of the population. When I was running my company in Asia, every business meeting started with people assuming I was my co-founder's assistant. My co-founder was a white male American. When I was living in the US, people asked me if the Czech Republic was in Euro-Asia or if it was Chechnya or China. And now I just lie to you because all three stories are true. There is no lie. Let's define mental models. A mental model is simply a representation of how something works. It is based on beliefs, not facts. We cannot keep all of the world's information in our brain, so we use models to help us simplify the complex into understandable chunks. Studies have shown that we make a decision on someone in the first few seconds after we meet them. Our brains are wired to identify threats and to help us determine whether the person we just met poses any danger to us. Snap decisions are important because we have to categorize in order to be able to move on to make other more important decisions. Imagine if we never categorize, we would never be able to get through the day. We especially move on fast when we see things that are familiar, things that we've seen before. So if my best friend is Italian, I'm probably going to like the next Italian person that I meet. If I've been to China, I'm probably going to like the next Chinese person that I meet, and I'm probably going to walk up to them and say, hey, I was just in China last summer, I love your food. If it's someone that reminds me of me, I tend to like them more. But what about the opposite? Mental models are not useful when they result in damaging consequences, especially when it comes to college acceptance, job interviewing, or housing. When we move too fast and judge based on familiarity and are less willing to accept things that don't fit our mental model, discrimination and lack of diversity occurs. So how was I going to explain to anyone that I'm from Europe? My mother tongue is Czech, I dream and curse in Czech, my English is fluent, not because it's the country's official language, but because I went to a British school. My Vietnamese parents speak some broken Czech, don't speak any English, and did not go to college. But I graduated from a top US university, and I can have a pretty decent conversation with you about US politics and why Thanksgiving is so important to Americans. I couldn't do the same with Vietnamese or Czech current affairs. I'm familiar with Vietnamese culture, thanks to my parents, but I probably could not name Vietnamese dishes, at least probably like five of them. When I eat Asian noodles on a plate, I always use a fork. I get a little disappointed when people look at me and automatically just assume I am just Asian. They don't take into consideration that I'm also a really proud born and raised European who has spent the majority of her adult life living in the US. And by the way, when I first meet someone, I don't really want to be talking to you about those things. I want to talk about my interests or your interest. In other words, you are not complimenting me when you tell me that you like Vietnamese people and Vietnamese food. Over the years, I learned to tailor my behavior based on the person that I would be speaking to. Was it going to be someone who hasn't interacted with many international people? If so, I would be asked, where are you from? I would say the Czech Republic, and they, then they would ask, where are you really from? We all know this extremely annoying question, right? Or was it going to be an older Asian traditional male who believes in hierarchy and in a male-dominated culture and in women being submissive, I would secretly tell myself to not show my real side too much, the side that is assertive and dominant and a little rebellious. I would tell myself to just keep it quiet. Or was it going to be someone who would be willing to see me for who I was? Was she or he willing to look at my work, my thoughts, or how nicely I just treated them? before she or he defaults to their mental model? Were they willing to change their existing mental model after meeting me? To some extent, I understand. I am not the majority in almost any environment. I probably don't fit your mental model. It is not humanly possible for anyone, including myself, to approach every new thing 
without any preconceived notion. So I want to be understanding and adapt to you too. I think it's extremely important to be understanding of other people. But at the same time, I want to encourage you to consider these four tips the next time you're talking to a stranger like me. Ask questions other than where are you from. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that question. I just think that there are better questions you can ask. Like, where did you grow up? Accept the answer they give you. If you decide to ask where are you from, accept it. Don't go further. Don't try to figure out who the parents are, what the heritage is, what is the ethnicity. Let the person answer the question the way they want to answer, and then respect it if they decide not to disclose their entire family tree with you. Do not assume. Do not assume that because I am Asian, I have a lot of Asian friends, that because I am a woman, I like to get my nails done, that because you are older, only you have something to teach me. I can't believe I'm saying this. It should be obvious. Let people reveal themselves to you. Ask them questions and then let them guide you. People love talking about themselves. So if it's someone who loves to talk about their country of birth and their ethnicity, you will find out pretty quickly. In that case, you should ask more. But sometimes, there are people who are tired of having to explain themselves. If you see no indication that that's what the person wants to talk about, telling them that you also know someone from their country or the country of their parents isn't going to break the ice. The greatest gift we can give to anyone is to let them be who they are, not who we want them to be. Thank you.